Good evening. I'm Avery Jones, and welcome to this edition of Spotlight. In debate tonight, the current crisis in the oil industry. The price of crude oil is now at the highest level it's ever been, and Americans are feeling the pain at the pump. In California, gas prices now hover at an unprecedented $7 a gallon and are expected to rise even further. How did we get to this point? Some experts say worldwide violence is complicating the rules of supply and demand. Others say the oil companies themselves are to blame. In the past few weeks, we've seen protests worldwide. It's having a tremendous effect on our economy and on our sense of security. The increase in global tension is palpable. It is in this atmosphere that the World Energy Forum will take place in London next week. Energy leaders will be meeting for the first time face to face. Will they be able to pull us back from the brink? Joining us tonight are two men who are intimately involved with the workings of the oil industry. Jude Corwin is CEO of British-based Pemico Industries. Harold Kingman is President and CEO of Transglobal Energy, a multinational corporation based right here in America. Gentlemen, welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for having us. Mr. Corwin, I'll begin with you. Mm. What's your take on today's oil crisis and what do you hope to see emerge from the World Energy Forum? Well, the name alone gives us reason to be optimistic about the future. It is an energy forum. It is not an oil forum. Oil has been treated as a primary fuel resource for far too long and most major energy companies recognize that fact. With the exception, if I may say respectfully, of Transglobal, we're all taking I... responsibility for past mistakes. We're establishing a new, independent, realistic pricing structure, one that seeks to protect future generations. We need to free ourselves, don't you agree? We need to free ourselves from our dependence on fossil energy sources. All due respect to my colleague, but his logic is specious at best. Today's prices have been artificially inflated, and I'll tell you why. Companies like Pemico have reduced output quotas, unnecessarily I might add, to create a false crisis. These companies have pursued an aggressive merger and acquisition strategy for the past couple of years, in essence, creating a new unregulated version of OPEC. They're in a position to dictate prices. We've seen the financial results of that position, and it's not a pretty sight. Mr. Corwin, how would you respond to these allegations? Well, it's conspiracy theory balderdash. Oh, I mean, it's absolutely absurd. Yes, it is. It's absurd to, to think that we can continue to treat oil as an inexpensive commodity. I remind you, sir, that it is a finite resource. And it is also a pollutant. It is destroying the environment. And I say again, we have responsibilities to future generations. And Pemico takes this responsibility very seriously. I'm sorry, oil combustion processes have never been more environmentally friendly. And our labs are working daily to improve those processes. And the reality is, our dependence on oil won't be remedied for at least 20, 25 years. We have a responsibility not only to the environment, but also to the economy. To price gas at $7 a gallon is outrageous. <laughs> outrageous. Mm -hmm. Extreme policies like that could mm -hmm. stall growth and create recessions worldwide. It's only through continued growth that we'll be able yeah. to make oil consumption cleaner and more energy efficient. I've got to jump in here. Most economists, including some at the White House, sir, consider this present price disparity a dangerous sign. It is, Not quite really. frankly, really. a ticking time bomb. If a united front is what you want, there's a mm. simple solution. Indeed. What is that? Lower your prices. Well, there you have the kind of arrogance. When our Egyptian refinery becomes operational, we'll be able to provide inexpensive oil to the entire world, not just America. Egypt is a perilous mistake. It's the largest oil vein ever discovered. It's going to completely transform the supply-demand equation. Yeah, our technology is advancing at a staggering pace. Yeah, right. Look at Houston. Is a highly sophisticated supercomputer compared to the mechanical calculators that Pemico and other companies use. And the Egyptian refinery will be 10 times more advanced than the one in Texas. It's time for my colleagues to face facts and to prepare for the future. It's coming, whether they like it or not. What if recent terrorist attacks against energy holders? 
Ah, well, yes, this Indeed. is another terrorist attacks. Indeed, another tremendous problem our industry faces. Now, these attacks are on the rise, as you know, Avery, and they are being perpetrated by men and women who actually believe they're protecting the environment. It's, it's an extreme reaction. And yet, another sign, yeah, not, surely we can agree on this. It is sure. another sign that energy companies must change their business practices and adapt to the future. Despite these growing security risks and no company has been hit harder than Transglobal, we've proven that it's possible to continue providing oil at a reasonable rate. What is the issue is the fact that companies like Pemco are raising oil prices. That puts people in a desperate situation, which leads to a desire for a scapegoat. Oil companies are the scapegoat. It's an unfortunate state of affairs, no. and it's one we mean to solve. No, I, I'm sorry. A, a desperation is... I'm sorry, gentlemen. That's all the time we have tonight. I'll see both of you next week from World Energy Forum in London. This is Avery Jones for Spotlight. Good night.